Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Kevin. This will be uh, my first video on my G0704. There'll be plenty more to come, so like, subscribe. Stay tuned for some wacky, crazy stuff, you know, uh, gadgets and gizmos, spinners and tops, and all that kind of stuff. I uh, have two cars that I work on all the time. I just currently made a map, map flange for my Audi and uh, putting a, fixing the intercooler piping on that, putting a three inch exhaust. So I'll have a little bit of TIG welding, a little bit of fabrication, just a little bit of everything from car parts to gadgets to EDC. Plan on taking this knife right here and doing a carbon fiber inlay on it. This, not a bad knife at all. Zero tolerance, titanium flipper. It's, it's nice. Not a Grimsmo knife, but it's not a bad knife. But uh, sorry about that, got distracted with my knife. That happens. Bought this mill used off a guy here locally. Well, about it, he's about an hour away. Uh, the gentleman's real nice to me, you know. He let me use the mill a little bit before I tore it apart and took in three pieces, stuck it in the back of a pickup truck and drove back, carried it down my basement stairs and here it sits. The only bad thing is the RPM gauge is broken but uh, most of the time I'm cutting aluminum so I don't need to know what the RPM is. Just crank it to 2250 because that's all I have right now. That's where she sits normally. And hog away. Uh, Arizona video CNC conversion. Uh, nice, very nice conversion actually. He uh, did a very good job on this. Tolerances, the backlash, it, as advertised, actually better. The X and Y were better than what advertised, and the Z was right at what he advertised for the backlash settings in Linux. It's just hogging away at some tool steel. I'm sorry, drill steel. It is a pre precision ground drill rod. That's I'm going to use to make a tramming bar. It'll have another plate that goes across here, and of course it'll go in the spindle, and I'll have spots where I can put two uh, Mitsutoyu uh, dial indicators at right now I only have one so I'm just gonna do it with one it should it'll make it easier when I have two later on yeah it's working good it's pretty precise uh, I think this is a cheap Amazon H I want to say HHIP yeah HHIP vice it is a piece of crap but for how you get what you pay for it holds stuff it works halfway decent. You can see I already took a chunk out of it. That was that's what happens when you set the Z, and then or you set the tool the tool length before you set the Z, and it has a tendency to just go. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna run through your vice if you don't mind. That kind of happens. And I uh, just got my coolant mister working, so I'm kind of doing a test cut with some heavier metal than I normally cut. It is a cheap Amazon coolant mister that I took and modified you can see that just a little bit of coolant every now and again spurting through there yep there it goes comes out here it's got a real fine hole so I like that so it works really nicely so but I couldn't get the siphon for nothing you can, I could not get the siphon liquid out of a container for anything. I had it on the ceiling up here. I had it sitting up here. I had it sitting above here. I had it every, all higher. I had it being gravity fed. That's the only way I can get it to work. It sucked. So I ended up taking and making my own mixing block with some Legris fittings. Some Legris fittings and a needle valve. Coolant's obviously coming through here, the air through here, real fine. I think uh, 0 .0, 0 .04, 0 0.04 inch hole, and then uh, 0 .08 or 0 .09 or something like that through hole. 
and it works perfect. I have it just cranked or about every eight to 10 seconds. It's sending a pulse of coolant. It's enough to keep my bit cool. Especially I'm cutting at half what G Wizard actually recommends. So I should have really no problems with it. And it goes up and around. There's a little curly cue over here. I need to do a back loop so it stops siphoning back down. But down here I just have a DuPont uh, oil filter housing that I took the filter out of and the one the one goes in and I drilled this fitting out to where it'll go all the way through and it goes down in there and you can't see it but it's uh, you can kind of see it right here and it's teed off the regular air goes here solenoid valve and I think it's getting kind of hot it's US I think US valve company or something like that solenoid company or something like that off of Amazon regulator and then a T and then I have my you know I have my my hose here my air wand that's very that's the first thing I did that was the nicest thing I did I have California air, air compressor feeding it all because it's quiet and I am in my basement and I don't want my my fiance yelling at me too much but my CNC controller is a large extended case where I used a mini motherboard with a graphics driver built in so then I just put a piece of plexiglass over here uh, on some standoffs and then I put my three three drivers on here and what I did was nice shield of cable to my C10 breakout board which is you can see it's actually on the PCI connector I actually had a PCI connector or PCI laying around with a communication port on it and I just took it off screwed it onto this one and it fit perfect uh, my 48 volt power supply sorry about the compressor there it's not too loud you can tell but uh, the, the that shaking is actually louder than the compressor I take that off, it's quiet. Quieter, I should say. But uh, it has, I have four relays hooked up to it. One turns the power on to the 48 volt power supply. Then another turns on coolant. And I'll have my, the yellow wires that you see there, those are for my cool mist, my coolant mister. Then uh, it'll have flood coolant, and I haven't quite sure, I'm not quite sure what the third output will be for quite yet. But as you can see, works very nicely. I have a 12 volt to 5 volt, uh, what do you call it, MOSFET? I want to say a MOSFET, I can't remember the proper name right now. I need to put some capacitors in it because the it keeps it's jumpy but so then I can translate it to 5 volt from 12 because I have some I have some sensors uh, some limit switches that I want to put in that I just haven't put in because trying to home this thing is irritating as all can be sorry about that my cap fell doing kind of a heavier cut but yeah, it's cut through this uh, drill rod very nicely. The cooling mister is definitely keeping it cool. I can, you can hear the di difference with the coolant versus just air. I've been just using air for the first couple months I've had this mill and having coolant, I'm using uh, Quali Chem uh, uh, 251, Extreme Cut 251C. I bought this whole jug off of Tormach and you can see, that's all I've used. Literally, this, uh, sorry about this, this container, let's go over here. I filled it up to the one, that one. And I filled that whole container up with just that. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is gonna last me a little while, but then again, I have a, I think it, it's like a 10 gallon tote I believe that will use up most of my coolant. I just have to figure out how I'm going to do it. I took this 
this tray I made once I got the mill because there was no way I was going to be sweeping up chips and cooling everywhere. So you can see I put a drain here and I sloped the entire thing using epoxy and fiberglass. From one side to the other there's just hockey pucks holding the mill up and then with another hockey puck on top of it for spacers. And I actually was able to tighten it down tighter on one side than the other and actually level the mill. Which I, are, I had the base leveled, which you can see there's gigantic stations under it to get the thing level in my basement. But I have it tied down with anchors. Luckily my basement floor was thick enough. But sorry about the mess. I was uh, in the middle of making stuff and uh, it broke so I had to fix it. Now it's fixed and now I'm making more stuff. But yeah, uh, Tormach Superfly Cutters. I'm using Tormach TTS system. I just have two with a variety of different size collets, so that's kind of annoying. I only have one of each collet, so if I have two tools that are the same, I can't use them. Um, just a disaster. I am. I apologize for this. This was a failed attempt. This is what happens when you try to start back in the middle of a code and you don't exactly know where you're at in that code, yeah, that, that was a failure. But this was a semi-successful piece that I made. I also made a couple other successful pieces. Uh, one of the examples, I used, I made a 3D machined a map flange for my Audi. I'm gonna fix the uh, problem with the leaky, leaky map flange that I have. But this is a emblem replacement for a saddlebag. Me and my father uh, custom fit some Road King saddlebags to a deuce. So I'm making, instead of Road King, we don't want that anymore on the side. So I'm making some custom emblems. So it says deuce on the side with some skulls. Everybody knows what skulls, but it's a skull. I'm not saying which. But yeah, so this worked pretty nicely, but what I was running into, the mill is not 100% trammed. I was using a dial indicator in the in the uh, chuck, or in the collet, I'm sorry, and was trying to tram it with that, and you're only tramming it that far, you know, because they're that far, because it only turns around so much. And then I tried putting a dial indicator, a test dial indicator, in my Narga base, no go. No go base. And um, what I did was I unscrewed it and I stuck that in a, co a 3 8 collet and it fit perfectly. And what happens was it was wobbling around and I still couldn't tram it right. So we're making a tramming rod now because I'm tired of breaking 3 330, I'm sorry, 132nd inch end mills in the eyes which i've done i think i broke five of them four of them i gave up i was using four flute four flute end mills for one which was uh my mistake because it was gunking up because i was like i said i was only using air so this was gunking up and snapping off the end mills i got i was doing full depth of cut it did one eye and it broke then I cut it, I redid the code where it was doing a quarter depth of cut, what I wanted, my finishing depth of cut. And I got that one, and I got that one, and I was just about finished with that one, and it snapped. So then I went back through and went to do it again, and then it got a little further, and then it snapped. Yeah, it was so, and my other problem was I figured out I did the backside first and then held it in the vise using these pins. These two pins are parallel. This pin's offset. So I use this and I set this pin against the vise and I use my, my Y is right here and my Z, my Y and my Z is right here. So I use the corner of my vise and then I offset it by what the diameter of this pin was and it worked really nicely to cut the outside. As you can see the for just using air, doesn't have a bad surface finish at all. 
And that was an eighth inch end mill to get into the grooves there. Did all that and yeah, so um, this video is getting longer than I wanted it to be. So, oh, I'm using Lennox by the way. So I'm gonna get off here and try to finish this, but stay tuned, like I said, like, subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for some crazy stuff. I doing a like I said uh, doing a custom exhaust on my Audi doing a three inch exhaust on it and a little bit of TIG welding a little bit of machining a little bit of ga uh, different gadgets and gizmos and I'm gonna try to produce a video once a week maybe twice a week we'll see what happens and uh, stay tuned for more all right have a good day bye